In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to create this procedural wood plank material. And after we create the procedural material, I'll show you how to join the material together into this custom node group so that you can control the look of the material. So we have the scale to change the size of the material, so you can change this depending on the size of your object. Then we have two different colors for the wood, so we have a lighter color, and then we also have a darker color. So if you want like a lighter wood, you could turn the darker color up, and you can see the wood looks quite a bit different. Then we have the normal noise scale 1, and then we also have noise scale 2, so that can really change the look of the wood. Then we have these really cool values here, these texture variations, so by changing these values you can get lots of different wood variations. You can see that now looks like a completely different wood just by changing those two texture variations. Then we also have this noise detail here, this will just make the noise more or less detailed, so you could turn it down a little bit if you want. And then we have the Voronoi detail, and then also the Voronoi detail too, so those can definitely change the look of the wood. Then we also have the knot scale, so this wood actually has some little knots, so you can make the knots of wood bigger or smaller. And then we have the knots darkness value, so if you want those knots to be less visible or more visible, you can just drag the knots darkness. Then we have the roughness of the material, so if you want the wood to look more like it's painted or polished or has some kind of finish on it, you could just change that roughness to make it more shiny. Then we have a few different bump strengths, so we just have a noise bump strength, which is just some noise all over the wood. We also have the knots bump strength to make those look look more bumpy, and then we have the wood bump strength, which is just that base wood texture. And if you'd like to purchase this procedural material and help support the channel, then you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page, the links are in the description. Now I've also created another 10 procedural materials, and so I've just updated my Ultimate Blender procedural material pack. So my Ultimate Blender procedural material pack comes with all of my procedural materials, and they're all preset up for Blender's asset browser with custom thumbnails, sorted catalogs, and customizable notes groups. And every time I create another 10 procedural materials, I update my ultimate material pack. So if you're one of my existing customers, then you can just re-download the product files and reinstall the ultimate material pack in the asset browser to get all the new updates with these new 10 procedural materials. And I also sell packs of 10 procedural materials, so I've also just released Blender procedural material pack number 18. I'll have all those links in the description. Alright, so I'll now show you the 3D setup if you want to set up the blend file the same way that I have. So I want to preview this material on a sphere, so I'll go to the add menu, and I'm going to add an icosphere, and then right behind me when you open up the add icosphere settings right after you add the icosphere, I'll turn the subdivisions to 6 so it is nice and smooth and round, and then I'll scale this object way down to like a 0.1 so it's a better size using the real life scale in Blender. I'll press Control A, and I'm going to apply the scale so this is the default side of the object, and then I'll use the object context menu and shade that smooth. Let's also go to the add menu, and I'm going to add a cube because because I want to actually preview this on a plank of wood. I'll also scale this down to a 0.1 and then press Control A and apply the scale. And then I'll go into edit mode and I'm just going to scale this down to the size of a plank of wood. I can also bring it over and kind of rotate it, kind of rotate it up like that. And then I want to add a little bevel to the edge of the wood. So I'll go to the add menu. I'm going to search for the bevel modifier and we're just going to add a bevel modifier here on the modifiers. And we will turn the amount way down so it's much smaller. And let's turn the segments up to maybe like a 4. So we're just going to have a tiny little bevel on the edge of the wood, and then we'll use the object context menu and shade it smooth. Now it may be a little bit hard to see, but on the edges, the edges of the wood don't look super sharp. And so what I'm going to do is click on add modifier, and I'm going to search for the weighted normal. So I'll add the weighted normal modifier. Now you can see right down here, it's going to say that you need to enable the auto smooth. So use the object context menu, and we're going to choose the shade auto smooth. So you can see before when it's set to shade smooth, you can kind of see it on the edges. It kind of looks a little bit smooth, which is a little bit weird kind of on those flat areas. You might be able to see it better in the reflections of the matte cap. But now if I shade auto smooth, it looks quite a bit more crisp and sharp. Then I also added some different area lights right here. So I added these two area lights. So this first one here, I kind of scaled it up and pointed it here on the back. And I set the power to 10 and I made it a slight yellow color. And then this one right over here, this is a more yellow color. And also I set the power to 10. And I kind of put this one behind the objects to give some nice lighting. And then I did also add an HDRI to get some realistic lighting and reflections. So if you go over here to the world,
build properties, I added in this Machine Shop 02 1K HDRI. So this is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com. The link will be in the description if you'd like to download the same HDRI that I'm using. So once you download the HDRI, you can click on the yellow dot here next to color. You can choose environment texture and then click on the open button and open up the HDRI. And again, I downloaded the 1K version and the HDR version. And then also just to make it a little bit less bright, I turned the strength here down to a 0.7. And then also I added this camera here and I just pointed the camera at the objects. And if you select the camera and go to the camera settings, I turned the focal length to 90 because it just zooms the camera in a bit and makes everything look a bit more flat and I like that better. And then just a couple other settings that I'm going to go over. I'm going to be using the Cycles rendering engine because I'm going for realism. And then also let's open up the film tab here and I checked mark the transparent button just so that the background is transparent so you can't see it. And also here on the color management, if you open up the color management, I set the view transform to filmic and the look to very high contrast just to pop out the colors and make everything more contrasted and saturated. All right, so I'm in the shading workspace. So I have the 3D viewport right over here and I'm in the rendered mode. And then I have the shader editor right here. So I'll click on new to add a new material and I'll just rename this material to wood plank. And then I'm also going to be using the node wrangler add-on to preview the different nodes. So if you don't have the node wrangler enabled, you can click on edit, you can go to the preferences, and then over there in the add-ons tab, if you go here to the search, you can search for the node wrangler and just check mark the node wrangler add-on so it's built in a blender and I'll show you how to use it in the video. So we can close blenders user preferences. All right, so then also make sure that you have the same wood plank material on both of these objects. So I'm gonna go to the add menu and I'm gonna start to search for a Voronoi texture and then using the feature of the node wrangler you can control shift and select the Voronoi texture to preview it and also with the Voronoi texture selected I'm going to press control T to use the texture coordinate and mapping nodes and I want to use the object coordinates so we'll put the object into the vector and the object coordinates are going to place the texture on the object more evenly and you can turn the Voronoi scale up so you can see it better. Now because this is a little bit of a complex material I want to keep my nodes nicely organized so I'm going to click and drag the box like these two nodes here and I'll press Control J. Control J will join them together into a frame, and then I can select the frame, and I can press F2 to add a label, and I can call this mapping. All right, so now we can change some of the Voronoi texture settings. So I'm gonna turn the scale to a seven. I also wanna turn the detail to zero, and then I'll leave the other settings how they are. Now this doesn't really appear as though it's doing much, but what I'm gonna do is add a noise texture here between the mapping and the Voronoi, and the noise texture is going to distort the placement of the Voronoi texture because it's going through the vector. So we'll go to the add menu, and we're gonna search for a noise texture, and let's put it here between the mapping and the Voronoi. So now it's going through the vector, so it's gonna distort the placement of the Voronoi. So you you can see now it looks kind of distorted. Let's change some of the settings of this noise. So I'm going to turn the scale to a 3.5. Let's also turn the detail to the max of 15, and the roughness here I'll turn to like a 0.8. And then also this distortion here, I'll turn that to 4, so that looks more distorted. Now I want to stretch out the wood texture to make it actually look more like wood. So I'm going to go to the add menu, and I'm going to search for a, another mapping node. And we'll put this mapping node after the first one. So now this mapping node, because it's going into the vector, it's going to change the placement of the textures. So we can, for instance, rotate or move or scale the textures. So I'm going to scale the texture to kind of stretch it out to make it look like wood. So on the scale X here, I'm going to turn this to a 5.5. And on the Y here, I'm going to turn this to a 0.45. And then I'll leave the Z at 1. So you can now see it looks like the texture is stretched. And then also one other thing that I want to do is I want to use the factor value instead of the color. So we'll put the factor into the vector. All right, now I want to have two different wood textures and we'll mix them together to make it more interesting and give more detail. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and select both of these textures and I'll press control shift D. So control shift D will duplicate the nodes, but it's going to keep the wires plugged up. So they're both plugged into the mapping and let's control shift and select this Voronoi texture to preview it. And I can change some of the settings. So I'll turn the scale to a six and the detail will turn up a little bit to like a 0.2. So it has a little bit of detail. All right. So then we can also change the noise settings. So on the scale here, I'll turn this to a 2.5 instead. And then I also want to turn this roughness down a bit to like a 0.45, so it has a bit less roughness. And then I'll leave these settings how they are. So you can see now we have kind of a larger wood texture. There's kind of some bigger spots and they're not quite as detailed. And then if I control shift and select this Voronoi texture, this one is kind of smaller and has more detail. So now you can see we have two different textures here and I want to mix them together to make it look like a really interesting wood. So I'm going to go to the add menu and I'm going to search for the mix color node because the mix color node can 
mix multiple colors together. So we'll drop the mix color node right here and let's bring these over so I have a bit more space. So I can now take the Voronoi distance and I can put that into color A and then the other Voronoi distance, let's put that into color B. And I'll control shift and select the mix to preview it. Now the factor is gonna change how much we're using of each one. So only color A or only color B. However, I don't just wanna mix between them because I wanna be able to see both of the textures that we're mixing together. So what we can do is change the mix type here to darken instead and this way it's just going to add the dark values. So now as I turn the factor up you're going to be able to see both of them. So you can see right now it's just showing the top one when the factor is zero it's only using A but then as I turn the factor up it's going to use more and more of just the dark values from the bottom one. So now we have a really interesting wood texture there's kind of some bigger details and some smaller details. So let's box select all these nodes. I'll press Ctrl J to join it together into a frame. If I select the frame and press F2 to give it a label, I'm gonna call it wood texture because this is the base of the wood. Now I also wanna create the knots. So we're gonna create a different group right here of textures, which is gonna be the knots. So I'm gonna start off by going to the add menu and I'm gonna search for a Voronoi texture. Let's place it here and I can control shift and select the Voronoi to preview it. And we wanna take this mapping vector and we wanna put that into the vector of the Voronoi. So again, it's using the object coordinate. Now this Voronoi here, if I turn the scale up, you can see there's going to be a bunch of little dots, and so we're going to use that to actually create the wood. So let's change some of the Voronoi texture settings. So on the F1 here, I want to change this to smooth F1 so the edges are much smoother. You can see that looks a lot better now. Let's turn the scale to just like a 16 because I don't want them to be too big. I don't want to be able to see too many of them. And the detail, I'll turn up a little bit to like a 0.5, but I don't want to turn up too high. And then I'll leave the other settings how they are. Now I want to make this Voronoi texture more contrasty so you can see the circles better. So I'll go to the add menu and we're going to search for a color ramp and we'll put the color ramp after the Voronoi distance. And then we're going to drag these two values together, and by dragging them closer together, they'll be much more contrasty. So I'll just drag these two about here, so the black one there and the white one there, so you can see that a bit better. Now, these don't really look like wood knots right now, because they don't really have any detail. So I'm going to be going to the Add menu again, and I'm going to search for a, another noise texture. And we're going to put this noise texture here after the color ramp. So because the noise texture has lots of noise data, we're now putting the Voronoi into the vector of the noise, and so now it's distorting it. So now that looks more like wood knots because they have those little circles there and it's more detailed. Let's change some of the noise settings. So I'm going to turn this scale to like a 20 and I'll turn the detail to 15 so it's very detailed and I'll leave the other settings how they are. Now right now it's distorting it way too much so it just looks like a bunch of little rings and so I want the Voronoi texture to have less of an effect over the noise texture. So to do this I'm going to go to the add menu and I'm going to search for the mix color. And we'll put the mix color after the color ramp so just stick it right there. So now this mapping isn't distorted at all, but the Voronoi is very distorted. So what I'm going to do is hold down the shift key and right click and drag over this wire and let go. And this is just going to add a reroute. So we can now just take the reroute and we're going to plug this here into color A of the mix. And then this color ramp color, that is going to go into color B. So now what this mix is doing is it's mixing between the original mapping, which isn't distorted, and this color ramp, which has these little dots. So we're mixing between them. So now I can drag this factor around and you can see it's gonna blend between them. Now, what I wanna do is take this mix here and I'm gonna change this to the linear light. So change it here to the linear light. Now I can control shift and select the noise texture. And so it's gonna control how much it's distorting the noise. So if I turn the factor all the way down, you can see it just looks like the noise it isn't distorted. But then as I turn the factor up, it's gonna be distorted more and more. However, it's just being distorted where those Voronoi dots are. So it's kind of adding those little rings. Now I want this to be a very, very small number, so I'm going to turn the factor to a 0 0.02. So now you can see it just looks distorted a little bit, it's kind of noisy there around those dots. So that's what we're going to use to create the knots in the wood. Now I want to make this more contrasty because it's pretty gray right now. So we'll take this color ramp, we'll press shift D to duplicate it and drop it here after the noise. And then I can drag these values around just to make it more contrasty. So we'll drag the black tab to about here and the white tab to about there. So now you can really see those knots a lot better. Now there's a problem with this and that is that there's lots of little noise here. And I want to just be able to see the knots, but I don't want to be able to see all these little bits of noise. So what we're going to do is create a mask and basically mask out these other spots so we can just see where the knots are. So to do this, I can duplicate this color ramp again, and let's control shift and select the color ramp to preview it. And I'm going to take this first color ramp and we're going to put that into the factor. And then I can drag the white and black values around, and I'll put the black tab to about here and the white tab to about here. 
So now you can see that we're basically just making this color amp more contrasty, so it's a bit bigger. So this color amp here, we're gonna use as the mask to tell it where we wanna be able to see those knots. And we're just gonna see the knots where the dark parts are. So I'll go to the add menu and to mix them together, I'm going to search for another mix color and we'll drop this here. And so we're going to plug the color ramp color into the factor. And then this bottom color ramp color, this one is actually the knots. The color is going to go into color A. And then right here on the mix type, let's change this again to the linear light. And let me just control shift and select it so we can preview it. So because this color ramp is going into the factor, this is determining what parts will be color A and what parts will be color B. So now here in color B, we can just make this fully black. So basically, if I control shift and select the color ramp, wherever these black parts are, that's going to be the knots. But then wherever the white parts are, that is going to be this color here, which is color B. So now we're just seeing the knots, but we're not seeing the noise. So we're basically using this to just mask out wherever the noise is and just see the knots. So now what I want to do is zoom out here. I want to box select all these nodes, press Control J to join it together into a frame. I'll select the frame and press F2 to add a label and I can call it knots. And then just to keep my nodes nicely organized because this is getting a little bit large, it's kind of a bigger material. I'm just going to kind of compress these nodes. You can just do whatever works best for you. I'm just going to kind of compress these down. Let's box select these nodes and bring them back. And what I can actually do is just kind of drag these nodes out just to make it look a bit more organized. So now we have kind of the wood texture here and the knots here. So now that we have both of these textures, we want to mix them together. So again, just like we did before, we can go to the add menu and we can search for a mix color to mix the different colors together. So now this top one here, this is going to go into the factor and then we're going to take this dark in here and we're going to put this into color A. And then let's control shift and select the mix. And here on the mix type, I just want to add the light values. So we're going to turn this to lighten. Now why I'm doing this is because I want to be able to control how visible the knots are. So you can see right now we're mixing them together. However, it's kind of hard to see the knots. But if I take color B and make it lighter or darker, that will allow you to see the knots better. So if color B is fully white, it's just going to add those lighter values and so now you can see the knot it is a little bit subtle but you are able to see the knot if I however turn it down the knot is going to become invisible so specifically I'm going to go with a very light gray color and if you want to use the same color that I'm using here on color B you can go to the hex value and you can punch in e4 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 so the knots are just barely visible but they are hard to see and so I'm also going to be doing this so that I can control the visibility of the knots in the custom node group now to actually control the visibility, I can go to the add menu and I can search for a hue saturation value. So we're going to drop the hue saturation value between this linear light here and the light in. Now the value here, this is going to make it lighter or darker. So you can see I can just now drag this value and you'll be able to see the knots better or they'll become invisible. So we'll be using this later in the custom node group. So let's box select these two nodes. I'll join them together into a frame and I can click on the frame and add a label and I'll rename this to mix knots and wood just to keep my nodes nicely organized so I can kind of see what they're all doing. So we're using these two nodes to mix the knots and the wood together. All right, so let's now create the base color. So I'll go to the add menu and I first want to make it more contrasty. So I'm going to add a color ramp, drop it here because right now this wood texture is pretty gray. So to make it more contrasty, we can take the light and result and we can put that into the color ramp and let me control shift and select the color ramp to preview it. So again, just like I talked about earlier, if we drag these two values together, they're going to be much more contrasty. So I'll drag the white tab kind of to about here and I'll drag the black tab over to about here. So something like that. So now you can just see the wood texture. It's a little bit darker. So now I want to add the colors and I want the colors to be customizable. So instead of just changing these two colors to make the color of the wood, I'm going to go to the add menu and I'm going to search for the mix color. So we'll drop the mix color after the color ramp and we can put the color here from the color ramp into the factor. So now these whiter and darker values will determine what parts are color A and what parts are color B. So for color A here, I'm going to make this kind of like a light tannish peachy color. And then for color B here, this is going to be kind of like an orangey color. And I'll make it darker so it looks more like wood. And if you want to use the exact same colors that I'm using, then here on color A, you can go to the hex value and you can punch in D39469. And then here in color B, you can go to the hex value and you can punch in 4A. 
2C, 1E. So those are the colors that I'm using for the wood. And now you can really see those knots a bit better and it really is starting to look like wood. So let's box select these nodes and we'll join them together into a frame. And I can add a label and I can just call this base color to keep the nodes nicely organized and so you can remember what they do. So let's take this mix result here and I can put that into the base color and I can control shift and select the principled shader to preview it. We'll drag these over here. All right, so that is now going into the shader. So it actually is interacting with the light now. Now I also want to add a little bit of variation into the roughness so that some parts are a bit more shiny and other parts are a bit more rough. So to do this, we'll go to the add menu and I'm going to search for a color ramp so we can change the colors and we'll take the light and result and I can put that into the factor. And then what I can do is take this color ramp color and I can put that into the roughness. So now if I drag these around, you can see that some parts are going to be more rough and other parts are going to be more shiny. Now I'm going to drag these two back here and I do kind of like how the roughness is. However, I want everything to be a little bit more the same and I want everything to be a bit more shiny. So on the black tab here, if I turn the black tab up, you can see it's going to be a bit more rough. So I'll just turn this to like a very, very dark black color. So something like that. So a very dark gray, but then this white color here, this color I'm going to make a bit darker so that everything is a bit more shiny. And if you want to use the same exact colors that I'm using, the black color is going to be a hex value of 161616. And the light color, this is going to be a hex value of EC, EC, EC. So later on the video, when we create the custom node group, I want to be able to actually control the roughness. So if we make the values lighter or darker, that'll change the roughness. So we can just go to the add menu and we can search for the hue saturation value and we'll put this after the color ramp. And so now we have this value here and the value is just going to make the entire thing lighter or darker. So if I turn it way down, you can see it's super reflective and it looks like a polished wood. So that's what we're going to use later in the custom node group. So I'll box select these nodes and I'll join them together into a frame with control J. I can select the frame and press F2 to add a label and I can just call this roughness because these are creating the roughness map. All right, so the wood looks very smooth right now, but I wanna make it look more bumpy. So we're gonna add some values into the normal to give it some bump. So first let's go to the add menu and we're gonna search for a bump node and the bump node will allow us to convert color data into bump data. So the first thing that I wanna do is add the wood bump strength. So right here, if I control shift and select this darken, you can see this is the wood. And so I wanna take this darken result and I'm gonna put this into the height value of the bump to convert it to bump data. And then the bump normal, that can go into the normal right here, the principal shader, and I can control shift and select it to preview it. So now you can see it's making the wood look very bumpy. And if I control shift and select the principal shader, now the wood looks very bumpy. Now that is way too strong. So let's just turn the strength way down to just like a 0.2. Also, we can add labels to nodes. So if I select the node and then press F2 to add a label, I can call it wood bump. So wood bump. Now I also wanna make the knots more bumpy. So we'll take the wood bump, I'll press shifty to duplicate it and let's drop it down here. And the normal can go into the normal. This way we can mix multiple bump maps together. So now what I wanna do is go up here to the knots. I wanna take this knots linear light here, the result. I'm gonna put that down here into the height value. And then also you can see that the wire is overlapping. So if you wanna change this, this is totally optional, but you can hold down the shift key and you can right click and drag over the wire and that's gonna add a reroute and I'll drop the reroute down here and then shift right click and drag over the wire and let go to add another reroute and I can drag this up here. And this just kind of makes it look a bit nicer because the wire goes down and then over. So I just like how that looks. Let's also select the wood bump. I'll press F2 to add a label and I can rename this to knots bump just to keep things nicely organized. So if I turn the strength up, you can see that is going to make the knots bumpy. Now there is a problem with this. If I turn the strength all the way up to one, you can see that there's all of this noise here. Now why this is happening is because it's really hard to see, but on this linear light here, there actually is a tiny little bit of noise. You can't really see it, but there's gonna be values which are darker and they're lower than zero. So black normally equals zero, but you can actually have negative values. Now, what this clamp result does is this will clamp the values or the colors so that white is going to be fully one and black is going to be fully zero. So let me just go back here and control shift and select the knots bump. If I go up here to this linear light and this is in the knots, if I clamp the result, now it's going to take all of the black values and it will turn it to zero. So instead of having negative values, so values lower than zero to actually see that bump, it's just going to turn it to zero. And so now that'll be fully black there. So that way by clamping the result, you can just see where the knots are.
So let's control shift and select the principal shader. Now you can just see the knots there right there and they're super bumpy. So let's make it much less strong. So here on the strength on the knots bump, I'm going to turn this down to like a 0.15. And then also I think that inverting it works better. So I'll hit invert. So instead of the knots looking like they're going out, now they just look like they're going in by inverting it. All right, now the last thing that I wanna do is just add a tiny little bit of noise over the entire material. So I'll duplicate the knots bump. Let's plug the normal into the normal here. And I can also turn off the invert. And then what I wanna do is just add another noise texture. So I'll go to the add menu. I can search for a noise texture and we can put the noise texture factor into the height value. And then I also wanna make it use the object coordinates. So we're gonna take this mapping here. We're gonna take the vector. We're gonna drag this all the way over here and stick it into the vector of the noise texture. And then also if you wanna add some reroutes here, you can hold down the shift key and right click and drag. Hold down the shift key and right click and drag. And you can just drag the reroutes around to keep the wires more organized. So I'm gonna bring this reroute over here and then this reroute down here. All right, so let's control shift and select the noise texture to preview it. And I wanna change some of the settings. So I'll turn the scale to like a 45 so you can see it better. So just change that to a 45. Let's also turn the detail to 15 so it's very detailed. And this roughness here, I'll turn this to like a 0.6. So it's more detailed. So now if I control shift and select this knots bump, let's press F2 to rename it. And instead of knots bump, we're gonna rename it to noise bump. So now you can see it's just adding a little bit of noise over the entire material. And the strength here, let's turn it to like a 0.1 so it's more subtle. So let's box select all of these nodes here and I'll press control J to join them together into a frame. And if you wanna like compress them down a little bit, you can, so I might just compress them down a little bit. And then we can select the frame. We can press F2 to add a label and I can just call this bump. Let's control shift and select the principal shader. And now we have a nice wood material with lots of bump. All right, so that is gonna be it for the procedural material, but to make this more customizable and easier to use, we're gonna be joining it together into a custom node group. So I'm gonna click and drag to box select all the nodes. I'll press Control G. Control G will join it together into a node group. However, when you're joining it in together into a node group, make sure you don't have the material output selected. So box select all the nodes except the material output and press Control G. Now to go in and out of the node group, you can hit the Tab key. So with the node group selected, just hit Tab to go in and out of the node group. So let's drag the node group way over here and I can drag it out to make it much bigger. And then also I'll copy the name and I'll paste the name here in the node group so it is called wood plank. So now we can add up all the custom values to the node group. So I'll hit the tab key to go into the node group. I'll press the N key to open up the side panel. And you can see if you click on the group tab, there's gonna be an interface. And right here on the BSDF, I'm just gonna rename this to shader because I like that better. All right, so let's make this a lot bigger so we have more space and we can now add up all the custom values. So if you go over here to this side, we now have this group input and we can plug values up to the group input to control those values outside of the node group. So let's first control the scale of the material. So this mapping node is plugged up to all the other textures. So this mapping scale will control the size of the entire material. So we'll put the scale into the extra socket there. And then if I click here on the scale, you can see it's gonna be three different values because it's a vector, but I wanna make it one single value. So let's click on the vector type here and I can change it to float. Now the texture goes away and that is because we need to turn the default value to one. And then if I hit tab to go out of the node group, we need to turn the scale back to one. So now we can go back into the node group and we can add the colors. So we'll take the group input and we're gonna drag the group input way over here just so we can bring it over here to the base color. And let's plug color A into the extra socket and then color B, plug that into the extra socket. And then I can just rename these so you can rename it to wood color or whatever you want. I'm gonna call these color one and then color two. Now I also wanna control the noise scale. So let's take the group input and we're gonna drag it way back here behind this wood texture and we have two noise textures. So I wanna plug the scale of both of them. We're gonna plug them here into the group input. So we'll take the first scale, plug that into the extra socket and the second scale, plug that into the extra socket. And then I can double click on them to rename them. So I'll rename this to noise scale one. And then also the second one here, let's call this noise scale two. And then I wanna control the variation of the texture. So this Voronoi texture here and this one here, these also have scale values. And you can see by changing the scale 
scale values, it's really going to make the wood look different. So we'll put this scale into the extra socket, and then this scale here, put that into the extra socket. And then if I double click on this to rename it, I'll rename this to texture variation one. And then this bottom one here, this one we're going to name to texture variation two. So if I go outside of the node group, you can see there they are. So I can drag these around to change the texture variation. Let's go back into the node group. Now these noise textures both have detail values and I want to be able to control the detail. So let's put the first detail here into the extra socket and then the second noise texture detail, we're going to put that into the same socket. And by putting them into the same socket, both detail values are going to be controlled by this single value. And I can just rename it and I'll rename it to noise detail. And then I want to control the Voronoi detail. So you can see these both have detail values, these Voronoi textures. So I'll put the detail into the extra socket and then this detail here, put it into a another extra socket as well. And I'll rename the first one to Voronoi Detail 1, and then the second one here, we'll rename this to Voronoi Detail 2. Then I also want to be able to control the scale of the knots, so I'll drag the group input right up here, and this Voronoi texture has this scale value, so this will change the size of the knots. So I'll put the scale into the extra socket there, and then I can double click on this and just rename it to like Knots Scale. Now I also want to be able to control how dark the knots are if you want to see them better, so let's just click on the group input and I'll drag it way over here and you can see the mix knots in wood this has a value and we can drag this up and down to make it more visible because this is controlling the brightness so we'll put the value into the extra socket there and we'll rename this to knots darkness and then I want to be able to control the roughness of the shader so we have this roughness value here and kind of just like this one it has a value to make it lighter or darker so this will control the roughness so we'll put the value into the extra socket here I can double click on this and rename it to roughness and then the last thing that I want to control is all the bump strengths. So we'll drag the group input right down here and we can now add the bump strengths. So you can just add them in whichever order you want. I guess I'll start down here. So I'll first take the noise bump strength, we'll put that into the extra socket, and then the knots bump strength, put that into the extra socket, and the wood bump strength, put that into the extra socket. And then let's rename all these so that you actually know what they do. So this one is the noise bump strength. This one here is the knots bump strength. And then the last one here, this one is the wood bump strength. All right, so let's click on the group input and I'm gonna drag it way back over here to the very starting. And then I can just hit the tab key to go outside of the node group and I'll hit the end key to close the side panel. Let's just make this bigger, bring it over here and I will zoom in here and we can just review the final material to make sure everything works nicely. So we have the overall scale and then we have the two different colors. So we have wood color one and wood color two. Then we have the noise scale and the noise scale two. We have the different texture variations. This is probably the most interesting one to use because it really changes the look of the wood. Then we have the noise detail. We also have the Voronoi detail one and two and this can also really change the look of the wood. Then we also have the knot scale. Then we also have the knots darkness if you want to be able to see the knots better or just get rid of them. We also have the roughness of the material if you want to make the wood look really shiny or really rough. And then we have the noise bump strength. We also have the knots bump strength. And then finally the wood bump strength. All right, so that is going to wrap it up for this procedural wood plank material. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to purchase this finished procedural material, you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. The links are in the description and purchasing is a great way to help support this channel. And if you'd like to purchase all of my procedural materials, then definitely check out my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack, which comes with all of my procedural materials pre-set up for Blender's Asset Browser with custom thumbnails, sorted catalogs, and customized node groups. And because I've just created another 10 procedural materials, I've just recently updated my ultimate material pack with all of these new materials. So if you're an existing customer, just re-download the product files and set it up in the asset browser to get all the new updates with these new materials. Or you can just purchase these materials here. These are my 10 newest materials by purchasing my blender procedural material pack number 18. And you can also purchase all of my materials individually on my Gumroad store. And to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, you can check out my Blender Procedural Material Tutorial playlist here on YouTube. Again, links are all in the description. So I hope you found the video helpful, and thank you for watching.